Hi, I'm Chris Johnson from Work Visa Lawyers. This is a video with some of the big policy changes during 2020. Of course, a year like no other due to the coronavirus pandemic. I'd like to thank my team for helping to put these videos together and you the viewers for making it a success this year with over 10,000 new subscribers. Our hearts go out to all those who have been negatively affected by the pandemic. Hi, I'm Chris Johnson from Work Visa Lawyers and I'm here today in front of the Royal Adelaide Hospital. We're going to be talking about the coronavirus. So we have some important updates that are very uh, dramatic. There are travel bans for Australia. From 9pm Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 20th of March 2020, travellers from all countries will be banned from entering Australia. There are some exemptions. The exemptions are Australian citizens, Australian permanent residents, New Zealand citizens who are usually resident in Australia, immediate family members of Australian citizens and permanent residents. So we can get some insight into what potential changes could be made to migration policy as a result of the coronavirus and its effects upon the Australian economy. Again, we'll be looking back at what happened in relation to the global financial crisis. The 2021 planning levels may be affected The Global Talent Independent Program is a new initiative by the Department of Home Affairs. The aim is to attract highly skilled workers from targeted sectors to the Australian economy. It's a pathway for entrepreneurs and skilled professionals in high-tech industries. The visa is fast-tracked to Australian permanent residency and will be a great visa pathway for high achievers from around the world. Thousands of temporary visa holders, including skilled workers, international students and bridging visa holders were overseas. Prime Minister Scott Morrison made the announcement on March 19th that the borders would close at 9pm Eastern Standard Daylight Time. This announcement left little time for people to organise flights back to return to Australia. Temporary visa holders may apply for a travel exemption if they have compassionate or compelling reasons to travel to Australia. However, there is no guidelines for what is considered compassionate and compelling and exemption requests have been dealt with on a case-by-case -case basis and are sometimes refused. Background about your your life in Australia, why you need to go back. Like my employer submitted a letter, like everything. Like we were also asked in one of our rejections, many of us, that our employers should um, be willing to cover the costs of the quarantine. The good thing about my relationship work with the lawyers was that we were always a step ahead from anything that would happen. The Department of Home Affairs has not given the state governments their quotas for general skilled migration for the new immigration year. That means from the 1st of July 2020, the state governments don't have numbers as to how many positions they can nominate and it's not open for uh, invitations through the system. This will be very disappointing for many applicants or potential applicants who have spent a lot of money doing skills assessment, getting English tests done and getting ready to potentially do an application. This is difficult news for many as the number of invitations is low and will be disappointing. The Department of Home Affairs seems to be inviting almost exclusively for a narrow range of occupations. These include medical, health, aged care related, engineering and some agriculture related occupations. The minimum points, which sounds encouragingly low, seems to suggest that the department is mainly inviting based on occupations and not so much based on points. Not only helpful as a lawyer, but uh, they kind of went above and beyond and kept, keep sending me messages or email of how things are going. I really appreciate uh, uh, the, the sincerity that uh, work visa lawyers gave. Uh, ever since 
I've been them, I've been working with them, um, never had an issue since. And I don't see any other companies or other other lawyer offices uh, doing a better job than work visa lawyers. So there's been a huge amount happening in Australian immigration. Uh, a lot of it is influenced by what's happening in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. At the time of filming, there has been a second wave, which is mostly affecting Victoria, but also New South Wales. To limit the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on international students, the federal government has announced five major changes which will impact the students currently in Australia and those who are overseas and unable to travel to Australia due to COVID-19. The 190 and state nominated 491 visas are currently still closed as the states wait to receive their allocations from the federal government. The 189 and family sponsored 491 visas are receiving limited invitations. So which test is easier? Well, so far, there's no concrete evidence that any particular test is easier than the other. They after all are secure English language tests, so they're going to obviously need to have similar scoring criteria for similar requirements. They are testing the same language. So there's not going to be any massive uh, difference in terms of which one is easier objectively. However, it does depend, I think, on which format you're more familiar with. Have you prepared for the 21 PT exercises? Are you more familiar with a, a computer-based delivery? Or are you more familiar with what you've learned in terms of the IELTS test, in terms of its format? Are you okay with writing by hand? At the time of shooting this video, the number of COVID infections is relatively low in most of Australia, aside from Victoria. Victoria is battling a second wave of infections and is in stage four restrictions. There have been a number of big announcements in relation to migration policy in the last month. These include that some of the states and territories have begun opening their skilled migration and business visa programs, that occupational ceilings have been announced, and that there's been the announcement of a five-year visa extension for some Hong Kong passport holders. There seems to be quite a lot of talk of the October budget and that our new revised levels will come out after that. Unfortunately, my view is the numbers of invitations are likely to remain low and also to be in narrow fields similar to the critical skills we are currently seeing. And Chris, who is always very uh, balanced in his, his opinion on what's next, was actually quite confident in my, my chances of getting this visa. Uh, and we applied uh, almost six, seven weeks from the date of application till the date that I got my visa. I'm gonna be talking about something which is pretty close to my heart. It's the uh, big changes for South Australian immigration. Just um, recently, the website was changed and we now have a, a new name for the website. It used to be Immigration SA. Now it's called Move to South Australia. So Move to South Australia is a streamlined version of the website. So the first number to know about is the planning level for 2021 will be 160,000. This is the same number as was for the previous year. And in a way, that's going to be a relief for many. Many were fearing that the migration planning level would be put very low this year due to the COVID-19 outbreak. The government has doubled the allocation of business innovation and investment program from 6,862 up to 13,500 places. Another big winner in these allocations is partner visas. The family stream planning level has been set at 77,300 places. This is up from 47,732. Within this planning level, there's been an increase to 72,300 for the partner visa category. So where are the reductions? They're mostly in skilled visas. For employer sponsored, the number has gone from 30,000 in 2019 to 22,000. That's a decrease of 26 percent. For skilled independent, the number has been reduced from 16,652 in the 2020 year to the 6,500 in the 2021 year. That's a decrease of 60 percent. But the basic message is that there's going to be more English language requirements for partner visas. This may make some upset and does 
cause some questions to be asked about whether Australia is heading back towards the white Australian policy days, which would be a terrible mistake. So what are the overall trends revealed in the October budget? The flavour of the last year was regional visas, but the focus on regional visas seems to have faded. The priority can now be found in relation to occupations that can assist with coping with the COVID outbreak or with making an economic recovery. With the federal budget in October, there have been some big announcements in relation to the migration program. The big winner for this year has been Global Talent Visas. Global Talent Visa has had its allocation upped from 5,000 to 15,000. The GTI visa application was 99.5% successful. These various announcements and releases about the GTI is that it's a visa which is in favour with the Australian Government, which has been promoted, given more allocations, and that when lodged has a very high success rate. Even though 65 points seem to be achievable and a positive for prospective applicants, the occupations that are being invited are quite selective and are mostly occupations within the Priority Migration Skilled Occupation List, or the PIMSOL. The PIMSOL is 17 occupations that have been identified as critical to Australia's recovery from COVID-19. The government has announced COVID concessions for a range of visas. In late November, 63 international students arrived in Darwin as part of a trial for the process of opening to more international students. I was extremely pleased with my choice in lawyer. It was quite a challenging process, much more challenging than I initially thought. I was absolutely elated to get my PR. As soon as I received it, it was like a cloud lifting off my head. It opened up my future in Australia, and now I'm moving forward to buy a house and moving forward with my partner. I implore anyone pursuing a visa in Australia to seek professional advice, and you really can't go wrong with work visa lawyers. Here are the latest updates on states and territory nominations. All states and territories have received final nomination allocations for the year from 2020 to 2021. Looking forward to 2021, we understand that visa applicants and visa holders have had to deal with some very unprecedented and difficult challenges in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On the 8th of December 2020, Margaret Keenan became the first person in the UK and in the world to receive the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. Over the coming months, more countries will begin vaccination programs. With the Australian borders effectively shutting on the 20th of March 2020, the year has been largely about more restrictions in terms of the migration program. With the rollout of vaccination programs, we're looking forward to more positive news in 2021 in relation to Australian migration. Please hit subscribe and we look forward to bringing you more news in 2021.